So do you ever wonder how a simple volumetric drawing like this can be transformed into a more visually interesting sketch like this? Like, how is it actually done? What's the process? And this video builds on the other two videos in this 3D sketching series, so make sure to check those out. And just one other thing before we get going. When I first started drawing, I was really bad. I had zero confidence. And so make sure to stick around to the end of this video where I'll share one like little bonus tip and a helpful resource. And both of these things really helped me to, you know, get better at drawing and develop my confidence. Okay, so time to get my sketchbook out and get this drawing started. So this first step is all about addition. We're adding volumes to these two volumes that we already have. And we want to explore an idea for say a house design. And now I'm just thinking about how I can slightly adjust these new forms to make overhangs. So these could be like covered exterior spaces. Here I'm showing rectangular volumes just to indicate low walls which could just help to define where hardscaped areas meet the surrounding landscape. So the next step is about subtraction. So we don't really want to think about doors and windows. Instead, we want to think about making openings for daylight. So puncturing the volume with openings. So I'm just defining these openings in the elevation. So I'm shading in areas where there's glass and then you can start to read this solid void relationship. So I'm also thinking about adding some roof lights. So that's subtracting from that pitched roof volume that we had made and allowing light enter from above. So maybe this rectangular volume pops up from, from this roof and allows light to filter into the, into the spaces below. So the third step is all about details. So to begin with, I'm gonna start thinking about materials. So I'm just adding vertical lines to the walls to give them some texture. Again, this could be wood cladding, it could be some other material, it doesn't really matter. It's just to start thinking about these surfaces and their textures. The roof, I'm also adding a texture to. Maybe this is like a corrugated metal roof or a standing seam roof, something like that. The next thing I'm adding is furniture. Again, it just kind of starts to populate the drawing and make it look like it's actually being inhabited by people. It's always good to add people to drawings. It gives them a scale and just makes them more realistic and populated. So the fourth step is context. So the first thing to think about is that we're trying to describe a place. And there's this idea called genius loci, which is basically about the spirit of a place. And so there's a few kind of techniques which can help us explore this idea of genius loci. The first is about creating depth with textures. So we want to structure the sketch with a foreground, a middle ground and a background. So here I'm adding these rocks um, to the foreground and I'm gradually making the size, proportion and spacing of them smaller as they move into the background. So in the foreground, again, I'm identifying individual rocks and features. In the middle ground, I'm just describing textures and patterns. And then in the background, I'm only rendering the landscape with a tonal value. It's just a simple shape. And then the next kind of idea is about creating atmosphere. So what we want to do is kind of mute or lower the tonal values the further back from the observer. So in this case, we want heavier tones in the foreground and lighter tones in the background. So for objects up close, like the grass stalks in the foreground, I'm darkening these values. I really want them to pop and stand out. And then for the kind of mountains that I'm showing in the background, I want these to be lighter shaded values. So they're just gonna be really simple and no detail. And that's kind of what this process looks like. It's about slowly building up the drawing from this simple series of volumes and over time you're kind of layering on these different techniques and transforming it from simple shapes into this sketch which has a lot of ideas behind it to do with describing place, creating a sense of atmosphere and showing this proposal for a building which has this relationship with the place that it occupies. 
So I'd mentioned at the start of this video that I'm going to share one tip that's helped me and that is just this idea of practice. So when you're first starting out with drawing and sketching, you know, you're seeing all these really impressive sketches and drawings on social media. People are sharing their best work on Instagram and it can feel very intimidating just to start. So one simple mindset shift can really help to overcome, you know, fe this feeling of intimidation and that is to build a habit of drawing and basically it's just about getting really really good at these kind of universal principles and techniques that people who are good at sketching use on a consistent basis and so the way to build a habit is to start off really small and really easy so you just want to do sketches for a few minutes a day and that way you'll be encouraged to continue to do it you just have to trust the process anyone who's really good at it has just done that and that kind of leads into the resource that I also promised and the resource that I'm talking about are these books and they are by the author Francis Ching or you might have already been recommended them in university or college but these two books one is called architectural graphics the other is design drawing they basically tell you everything you need to know about architectural graphics and how to draw by hand which i think is a really important skill to develop before you develop your skills in the digital environment and so basically if you can do those two things if you can develop a habit of sketching and then you can master the techniques in these books by francis ching you will just get better at drawing there's really no shortcut and yeah the whole thing will just feel a lot more fun when you're actually doing it and then you know you can actually start using these skills for what they're for which is to design bases and buildings so i hope this video was helpful let me know if you have any comments or questions down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.